Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Please remain standing. We have an important sermon for you this morning given by one of our youth, uh, Ethan, and he is going to read to you the gospel reading for his sermon right now. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he came and began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. I hope you are all, I hope you are all doing well on this Reformation Sunday. For those who don't know, my name is Ethan Pelletier. I'm 17 years old, and I've been going to Christ the King for about a year now and was confirmed here. In these trying times, we must ask ourselves, as Martin Luther told us to, how can we be followers of Christ today? We live in an era where freedom is questioned all around us. Authoritarian regimes who selfishly seek to steal the rights of their people seem to be on the rise across the world. And in places like Ukraine, Palestine, Sudan, and Myanmar, war divides people who should be sisters and brothers. In this nation, our own freedom is left uncertain by a fraught election that looms over us. I'm sure that we are all praying in our own ways for the stability of this country. Indeed, there is much to pray for, and there's much pain, sin, and anxiety in our world. As we saw during the readings, when Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, called out to Jesus for mercy, Jesus told the crowd to bring him forward. Uncertainty and struggle were also rife in Jesus' time, perhaps even more so than today. Rome had conquered the Mediterranean. Israel was held by the bonds of imperialism and the tyrannical rule of King Herod. And in that time, too, people were slaves to misery, sin, and illness. And yet, through all this, there was and still is hope. And Bartimaeus experienced this hope. Take heart, get up, he is calling you, said the crowd. And when Bartimaeus came to Jesus, this was all that Jesus asked him. What do you want me to do for you? 
and the beggar asked to be given his sight back. And Jesus told him, Go, your faith has made you well, and freed Bartimaeus from his blindness and his uncertainty. His faith made him well. He believed and thus was freed. And in this same way, we have all been freed and healed by our faith, thanks to Christ's sacrifice forever. For the Lord God sent us a Savior, his only Son made flesh and blood to sacrifice himself and to be a shining example of love and kindness to all people. In doing so, he gave freedom from sin to the entire world. During his ministry, Jesus brought a man's daughter back to life. He saved and forgave an adulterer. He healed a leper. And ultimately, he died on the cross and made grace a gift to all of us. When sin casts its shadow over us, Christ saves us from this blindness. He lets us see the beauty and love and kindness that is all around us. How can we be better Christians today? Reformation Sunday is a fitting day to ask this question. I think that we can be better Christians by following Jesus' example in this story. While we, of course, cannot literally heal someone's blindness, we can still emulate Jesus' example by asking those around us, what do you want me to do for you? We know that God will help us, but that does not mean that we cannot also help each other. We should go to our friends and fellow countrymen in times of blindness, of crisis, and must always ask them, what do you want me to do for you? And even if we aren't always perfect in our attempts to help, we will be better people for at least trying. We know life can be oppressive sometimes. I myself have been battling cancer over the past few months, and it has not always been easy for me to see the freedom that Jesus' sacrifice has given me. In fact, I had to ask permission in order to even give this sermon in person because chemotherapy has left me immunocompromised. But just because you can't always see this freedom doesn't mean it isn't there. And I have seen it. A few days after I got my initial Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis, I went out with some of my dear friends to get lunch. None of them knew at the time. We had a great time together. We talked, we walked, we shared a good meal. When I told them the news, they didn't believe me at first. And frankly, I deserve that given all the pranks I've pulled on them. When they realized I was serious, they were shaken. But as they asked more questions, and as the conversation continued, the weight of my diagnosis became lighter. We started to talk about how weird it would be to see me bald, and how much fun we would have when I was done with chemotherapy and healthy again. And soon, we were free from the weight of that illness. And indeed, we were stronger and happier than before, already planning for the glorious future ahead of us. This freedom is with us all, every day. It is with us when we laugh. It is with us when we enjoy a good home-cooked meal with family. It is with us when we ask our friends if they're okay, and when they ask us the same. I am free. I am no longer blinded. Because love is what sets us free. Love frees us to be joyful, to have faith in the future because of those around us, to be gracious, and to come together and praise God. By helping each other, even in small ways, we can all do our part. 
to make sure that we remain free and that our neighbors remain free as well. So I implore you, comfort someone when they're suffering. Be a friend to someone who's new to your town. Forgive someone who has wronged you. And be an example to those around you. And when we fail in this, we should never despair. For what we cannot accomplish on our own, God, in due time, will. So be free and help your brothers and sisters be free as well. Free them from loneliness, free them from ignorance and from hatred. And never forget this. God promises us in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you. Amen. Amen.